Hi, my name is Chris Metzen. I'm the uh, Senior Vice President of Story and Franchise Development for Blizzard Entertainment. The storyline for the Diablo universe uh, uh, really begins ultimately with this, this kind of fictional war between heaven and hell. Uh, the forces of hell, you know, the demons are ruled by uh, three gentlemen known as the primevals. Uh, our, our series villain Diablo is one of them. He's the Lord of Terror. And long ago, uh, the primevals were overthrown in hell. There was kind of a civil war, and they were cast to the mortal realm, where they caused all sorts of trouble uh, for centuries. Uh, and ultimately, uh, one angel, the archangel Tyriel, the angel of justice, uh, came down from the heavens to, you know, intercede on mankind's behalf. And Tyriel put together the Magnificent Seven, you know, a group of uh, mortal wizards uh, that would hunt down these primevals. And as the story catches up, Diablo is now beginning to, uh, you know, uh, get loose from his prison. Ultimately, uh, a lone hero arises, uh, arguably the, the hero you played, uh, and puts Diablo down, uh, but ultimately his evil uh, is loosed uh, in the story of Diablo II is, is he now is traipsing across the world attempting to release his two other brothers that were put down centuries before. One of the, the few running mainstay characters we have in the Diablo universe is a character named Deckard Cain, uh, who's kind of a, like a scholar or a sage uh, who is preoccupied with uh, you know, the war between heaven and hell. Cain has developed this, this book uh, he's, you know, of, of, of all of his research about uh, this coming apocalypse that he believes is, is imminent. There are still some powers in hell that we have not seen yet, uh, and he's convinced that they too will surface and rear their heads, and uh, you know, the final conflagration between heaven and hell will occur on the mortal world. The inciting moment uh, that really sparks off Diablo III is a, a sign in the heavens. You know, one day a star falls from the heavens down upon this quiet, wretched little town of Tristram uh, and shatters the, you know, the, the, the church there. So the game really begins with a mystery. What was this star and what does it portend? And is this, in fact, as Kane's work suggests, uh, the first sign of the apocalypse? Is, is it on now? Oopsie, you know, so we, we better rally and, and really get to the bottom of uh, what this star means, uh, you know, for the, the world of men. Leah is uh, mostly a new character uh, we conjured for Diablo III. Uh, we really debut her in the intro cinematic to the game. We've gone to great pains to make her very likable. Um, Diablo is a pretty grim universe, so we thought it would ground us a little bit to have a character that really re represents hope and um, you know, kind of the best qualities of, of who we are as people. Uh, she is the niece of Deckard Cain. Uh, in these past 20 years, he's carted her around on all of his zany adventures. Um, so she's kind of grown up with this old man and all of his kooky ideas and all the research he has done, and she doesn't know that she believes all of his wild ideas. You know, as I think back, uh, you know, the first few Diablo games we had published, um, they were pretty dark, uh, and they, they needed to be. It was, it was something very distinct about this franchise relative to the other two we had built. And I've always long held that Diablo, given the roots of its fiction, is potentially the most interesting franchise Blizzard has built. And um, I was keen to make sure that this sequel, after all these years, really rose to that challenge and really had more soul and more resonance than previous products in the line. And I think we've, I think we've achieved that. I think it's, uh, it's definitely a sharper look at this universe um, than we've had previously.